So bendamustin rituximab was again confirmed to be a very active treatment and indeed even the man who made this interpretation of this abstract, Brett Carl, concluded bendamustin rituximab is a standard first-line treatment because it appears to be the best treatment. Why? Because time to next treatment was by far better after bendamustin rituximab compared to chop rituximab. 77 patients out of the 215 with bendamustin were treated with a second line treatment compared to 109 after chop R. So the two curves, time to next treatment, are highly statistically significant different in favor of bendamustin rituximab. So by far less patients needed a second line treatment. And then I reported the overall survival. At 10 years, there was no statistical difference between the both groups in overall survival, showing that you have no severe late complications impairing the overall survival. 70% of the patients are alive after 10 years when they have been treated with bendamustin rituximab, compared to 66% alive when they have been treated with CHOP-R. So at least even the bendamustin curve is a little bit above the CHOP curve gives us a good confidence that bendamustin rituximab is also a safe treatment with a long-term follow-up. So the important thing to remember is that our treatment was just six cycles of BR compared to six cycles of CHOP-R without maintenance. That is a message from our study. I don't want to say that maintenance is not meaningful in that situation, but just this is the mature data of just the induction treatment, which is only six months long. So one message would be, even if you decide today to treat a patient with a follicular lymphoma with six cycles of BR, it is a very effective treatment with good evidence of data, even for a 10-year survival. And we will report on our maintain study where we added maintenance to bendamustin rituximab and I will report it in the upcoming ASH meeting. So far my message is even after just six cycles BR the treatment outcome was very good.